Hey guys, and welcome to another First Chapter Friday, or should I say a First Chapter Football Friday. It is football season where I am, and I have been in a football mood, and I decided to go to the library, check out some books about football. I said to the librarians, hey, what are the best books about football you have? And they gave me a few, and I've decided to check them out and share them with you. This book I'm kind of excited about it is Unstoppable by Tim Green, and you may not know who Tim Green is, but Tim Green played college football. Tim Green played professional football for the Atlanta Falcons. And you might find that's kind of interesting to me that now that he's not playing football anymore, he's an author, um, which you could be too one day. Maybe you'll be one I'll be sharing um, in our future. So let's check out how Tim Green's doing. Unstoppable, chapter one. Harrison admired the NFL football player, battered and exhausted, but unstoppable. Harrison knew about being battered and exhausted, not by the game, but by life. The player looked like a gladiator. Harrison looked like an overgrown farm kid. The player wore a green uniform with silver eagle's heads on the sleeves. Harrison looked down at his own stained and dirty coveralls and the worn down boots poking from beneath the tattered cuffs. Sweat matted the player's long blonde hair and beard. Blood ran down his face, but a light still shone in his eyes. Ghosts of steam curled up from his bare arms in the chilly night air. Skin slick with sweat stretched tight over bulging muscles. The crowd roared its cheers, urging the player and his teammates on to deeds of greatness. Harrison ached to be a football player and for people to cheer him on but he never could, and they never would. Every day when the final school bell rang, instead of joining the other boys for football practice, Harrison hurried home for chores. The player on the big screen TV rammed a helmet down on his head, and the camera followed him out onto the field where he was crouched, waiting. When the other team ran a sweep to the outside, the player swooped in like a real eagle, striking the runner, hitting him low and lifting him into the air so that he was flipped and crashed to the turf. The player flexed his bare arms and stomped across the field in a parade of glory. The crowd went wild, and Harrison couldn't keep still. A small, satisfied grunt escaped his lips. Mr. Constable pounded his beer can onto the coffee table, spun around on the couch, and glared. What are you doing here, Mud? Harrison stepped back into the shadow of the doorway. Mr. Mont Constable had called him Mud since the day he arrived. That didn't keep Harrison from continuing to think of himself as Harrison. And he threatened the two younger kids, Flossie and Crab, into calling him Harrison in private, even though Dora and Lump, the two older kids, called him Mud. I said, what? Harrison jumped and knew to answer. Watching? You got chores. You don't watch? Mr. Con Constable raised a fist to prove it. The other hand crept toward his belt. Harrison nodded, retreating toward the front door of the old farmhouse. Miss Constable appeared at the top of the stairs, her hair pulled so tight against her head that her forehead shone like a clean dinner plate. She puckered her lips and shook her head in disgust. Shoo, she said, as if he were a big rodent. Harrison returned to the barn and found his rusted shovel leaning in the doorway. A single bulb swung from the rafters, pushed by a small breeze. A cow shifted in one of the six stalls. Her hooves scratched the dry hay. With his shovel in his hand, Harrison dropped down into the milking parlor in the soup of manure. Green, brown, yellow. It depended on the feed the cows had taken. Harrison remembered the first time he'd smelled it and the taste of vomit in the back of his throat. Shadows flickered in the back corner of the parlor, and Harrison heard the hiss of hoses as Dora and Lump sprayed down the last of the milking machines. He began to shovel, slowly working the soup into the concrete channel and then down the channel until it disappeared into the night, plopping into the spreader below with a sloppy sound that Harrison could sometimes hear in his sleep. The smell of cigarette smoke brought, it with, brought with it Cyrus Radford, the orange ember on the tip of the cigarette glowed in the doorway like the single eye of an angry little goblin before Cyrus stepped into the light. 
Where you been, Mud? Cyrus wore coveralls like Harrison, also spattered with manure. But with no t-shirt underneath to cover his leathery skin draped over the raggedy bones. He scratched the gray and black stubble on his chin and spit on the floor. Mr. Constable called me into the house. Harrison didn't like to lie, but it was better than a beating. He knew Cyrus wouldn't question him being called into the house by Mr. Constable. Even though Harrison suspected that Cyrus hated Mr. Constable as much as any of the kids, Cyrus would never show it. Cyrus was afraid of Mr. Constable just like the rest of them. Who wouldn't be? Mr. Constable was a giant, thick and strong and rumbling with anger at everything life put down before him. His blonde hair had begun to fade, but his face was as red as a baby's. His blue eyes were so pale they sometimes seemed to glint back at Harrison like mirrors, making Mr. Constable seem something more or less than human. Well, finish up. Cyrus raised an arm to scratch at the hair in its naked pit. It's too late and I need a drink. Cyrus Radford lived alone in a trailer resting on cinder blocks down by the main road. He supervised the milking at five in the morning, noon, and eight o'clock at night. Dora, who was sixteen, and Lump, fifteen, had the job of slipping the suction cups onto the cow's udders as they cr crowded into the milking parlor. Only Cyrus was allowed to remove the milking machines because Mr. Constable didn't trust any of his kids to know when the cow was completely empty. Harrison's job was to keep the barn clean, an unending and impossible task in a world of manure, dirt, and flies. The younger kids helped Mrs. Constable around the house, and Harrison didn't envy them, because even though his job was dirtier and smellier, the younger kids were much too close to the tattered end of Mr. Constable's belt. Mr. Constable believed in his belt, just as he believed children needed hard work in order to improve. As the foster father of dozens of kids over the years, Mr. Constable said that that was his mission in life, to improve wayward young people in order for the world to be a better place. Harrison shoveled harder, trying to make up for the time he'd spent watching Monday Night Football from the doorway, scraping the concrete and spattering the manure so that tiny droplets speckled his face. Sweat dripped from his nose, and his older foster siblings had already disappeared when he heard Mr. Constable call from the barn door. Harrison shoveled double time, scraping and scratching and spattering, because he had a bad feeling about Mr. Constable's huge frame filling the doorway. Mud! Harrison looked up. Cyrus bobbed behind Mr. Constable, just beyond the light bulb's reach. Yes, sir? You've been lying, boy. You've been lying again. Mr. Constable removed the belt and flicked it against the concrete floor with a snap. I got a feeling I know what's coming, but forgot to read the book to see how the story ends. Sounds like a good one. Unstoppable by Tim Green. Give it a try if it sounds good for you. I hope you enjoy it.